Welcome back. Just kicking off hour two. Um, I'm joined right now by my dear friend, Pavlina Osta. She's uh, my favorite millennial. She's uh, many, many things, but uh, uh, if God had a podcast, she'd be the host. And in fact, she is the host of the If God Had a Podcast podcast. She's also the author of 20 Things Every Motivated 20-something Should Know. And um, Pavlina, you always bring me these different perspectives. I love hearing what young people are talking about, thinking about. I've been saying for a while that while they keep counting how many people died from coronavirus, uh, over 240,000 at this point, no one's calculating all the collateral damage, all the suicides, all the people who've right. gone back to drug use or drinking or uh, domestic violence and all this stuff. And it seems like uh, in many places in the world, the suicide rates are skyrocketing. Yeah, so it's no surprise that obviously COVID has had, you know, other issues that have come along with it. We have had a huge influx in mental health issues. Millennials and Gen Zs were already struggling with so many different anxiety, depression, so many issues um, in that realm. And in Japan, they have actually had a very long history of very high suicide rates. Um, and it actually, I'm no, you know, cultural expert in Japanese history, but I did sort of look into it and it's a long tradition of um, honorable suicides. And it used to be a, a samurai practice, which is really interesting to think about because in Japan, Christianity is not a big religion. So it's not seen as a sin. It's actually seen more as a way of taking care of business, a way of, you know, just you have a problem. It's a way of taking responsibility for that problem, which is a really interesting way to think about it, to see it. So that's why Japan, like Japan has always had such high suicide rates. But because of COVID, we have never seen these kinds of numbers in suicide rates because of the isolation, the anxiety from COVID-19, just like the, you know, the stress about having a job, not having a job. Unemployment has been horrible um, during this time. And of course, you know, the shutdowns, not being able to see your friends, not being able to see your family or even go home for holidays. Of course, that can obviously lead to it as well. And another thing in Japan, the reason why it's um, it's so it's such a big thing over there is because it's kind of shameful and there's a lot of guilt involved when you're talking about depression and things like that. So if you're dealing with any kind of depression, anxiety, whatever it may be, first of all, it's totally normal, but also make sure you're going, um, you know, seeing someone, you're talking to someone, you're getting the help that you need because that's so important. And I personally don't think that suicide is the answer for any of that. Um, and I also suggest like calling a friend and calling a family member that, you know, you can talk to. I think it's important to get as much sun as possible. Working out really helps with mental health. Um, but like I said, we have never seen these kinds of numbers and it's something that no one is really talking about. And the fact that Japan had more suicide rates in a month than COVID deaths is that's, that's saying something. And I think we need to listen to it. All right. Well, look, um, whatever you say, I listen to. And by the way, for those of you watching at home, um, Pavlina is a uh, great radio producer with Salem radio. She works for uh, Salem broadcast. She works for, uh, the Mike Gallagher show. She's also the host of the God Had a Podcast podcast. And she's also uh, Guinness Book of World Record holder. Because if uh, you want to know who interviewed the most people ever in the 24 hour period, you're looking at her right now. So uh, you got to listen to where she's coming. Now, um, it's Christmas season and there are, you know, deliveries abound, lots of things going on. Um, but at the same time, you got delivery men. Um, happen to go up to houses or whatever the pandemic is still going there's more ordering i guess and it's uh not really helping workers you say yeah so the delivery workers that we all know and love because they bring us our food to our apartments especially during this covid time i had so much food delivery you know my groceries my food everything um and they are struggling right now because you'd think that they would be doing pretty well because of everything that's going on um that they would have higher wages all of that stuff but they're actually not doing too great. And it's really unfortunate because they are not only putting themselves at risk, um, especially here in New York, the lot, a lot of crime is going up. So their bikes are being stolen. They are independent workers. So they're not able to get um, you know, minimum wage. They're also not able to get overtime. And a lot of, they don't work for the restaurants. So the restaurants can actually deny them like bathroom services and things like that. So they're just not treated as well as you may think. Um, and there are certain companies like DoorDash, Uber Eats that are trying to help uh, with, you know, 
making sure that everything is fair and like they do get 100% of their tips, at least for those, um, those apps. So that's one way you can, you know, try to help them. But it's kind of amazing that like these people are not only putting their lives at risk, trying to get us our food so that we can stay inside and isolate and quarantine and all of that. Um, and then they're not really getting like the respect they deserve. All right. Well, look, um, I'm all for keeping everybody safe. But when I need a double bacon cheeseburger, <laughs> if someone's life has to be put on the line to get me a double bacon You're going to need your, your burger, John. I get that. I totally do. <laughs> and I need my disco fries with the melted mozzarella on top and the brown gravy on lovely. the side. I'll do anything to get that. If I got to run through a COVID room myself and I need that burger, I'm going to get it, Pavlina. But Love let it. me ask you this. Um, you know, uh, right here in, in America, I'm at Max Public House, mm-hmm. and um, these guys were shut down for defying the governor's order, right? And, you know, we hear all this stuff going on at the national level with the election. I feel like the governor and the mayor with their draconian policies are actually trying to steal these guys' business. Um, what do younger people think about this government overreach that we're seeing in a lot of places? Depends on who you talk to, John. I think uh, a lot of younger people don't see it. They're not really looking at it as much. Um, A lot of young people are more on the liberal democratic side. So I think they they just sort of trust it. They just sort of believe it. Um, Whereas I know the more conservative viewpoint is that elections are they're frauds. There's you know a lot of different things going on in the elections. And um, hopefully younger people are recognizing what, especially here in New York, what's going on with businesses, um, what's going on, you know, that the mayor and the governor are doing, because I don't think they have the restaurants, I don't think they have their best interest in mind. You know what I mean? I really don't think that they, they care so much about keeping them open or helping them in a lot of different ways, because restaurants are, they're still hopeful that they're going to get some sort of relief, but there's not, they're not really sure what's going to happen. I think younger people are probably just more worried about making sure they get their burger or making sure that they get, you know, whatever they need or um, just taking care of their mental health. Probably. I don't, I have a feeling they're probably not thinking about it too much. So Pav, let me ask you this. Um, For those of you who can't tell, aside from being an amazing radio producer, aside from being a phenomenal podcaster, aside from being a world recognized interviewer, um, she's quite the fashion, uh, fashionista, I say. Um, and that's obvious if you follow her on uh, social. She's always got the mittest outfits on. But do I see a pair of matte gold Ray-Ban sunglasses on the on the wall behind you? Was that yeah, bad? I oh. love glasses. Whether they're sunglasses, I have to wear prescription glasses. And that was like a huge part of my wardrobe. Like I had so many different pairs, different colors that I was like, when I moved into this apartment, I was like, I need to make this a part of the vibe because it's my vibe, you know what I mean? So I got this custom made actually, and it's a mirror, you can kind of see it. Um, But I love this so much. And I'm glad you recognize, I'm glad you noticed it and appreciated it as much as I do. (laughs) Oh my God. I mean, you know, you're like, you know, you're like a fashionista, like big time. Oh, uh, my blazer, it's like uh, like a comic book. I don't know if you can kind of like see the eye and like the- It looks like it's- that's what it looks like to me but let me ask you um where does one get a gigantic godzilla sized pair of sunglasses to hang on the walls of mirror you know that's a great question i believe i might i probably got it off of like etsy or something like that um (laughs) but it was definitely custom made because i wanted like i wanted it to be gold because everything in my apartment is like gold silvers grays it's very like relaxing all up in here you know, yeah. I have to. I'm like, so- <laughs> up in there. I like that. It's all yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure you and, uh, I'm sure you and Jess and Jade, you put on the ASMR, you get all <laughs> axing tones going. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Just meditating 24 7. The moment I walk in here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I could see it. I could see I it. Love- I, wanna- I really want to get one of those like bowls that um, you kind of like. You like ding it and you like go like this and it has like that ring sound. I don't know what those are called. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. But that's the bell. <laughs> we got to go. Uh, Pavlina Osti, you're the best. Thank you so much. Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, if you remember, let me know where I can get a pair of them shades because you're too cool for school. I'll send Thanks. you the <laughs> Absolutely, John. Thank you so much.
Pavlina Osta, she's the author of 20 Things Every Motivated 20 Something Should Know. And you got to go check it out. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and mix it up with David Eisenbach and John Burnett right after this.